Hello everyone in Panel Lemon Tart, and for this video, we'll be continuing our Lavender Lane series. I will be building more residential buildings because our town is suddenly going to need it. And by residential buildings, I mean townhouses. Lastly, I'd like to apologize for being MIA for a while. Oceana servers have been experiencing high ping and bad lag for some reason, so I've not been able to film. Sorry about that. Anyways, let's get into the video. <laughs> Happy to say that starting off, I already knew the idea I had for this build and stuck with it throughout. I was going for the traditional townhouses you would usually see in New York. They usually have this half a hexagon looking window area, stairs to the second floor entrance, and generally bricky. We are going to make around four of these. This strip of land is honestly so perfect for it. It's too skinny, so I can't really fit any bigger establishments. I made sure to give them different heights, so not everything is the same and boring. But kind of stay within the three level range. I fenced the top area where the roof is going to be so that way it will have a little bit of shape. And as usual, I use wall trims to accentuate the detailing. Same goes with the pillars. I added windows especially to that hexagonal shape part of the exterior and also adding shutters because they make everything better. These are the colors I went for at the start. Ivory, a darker stone gray, green, and this reddish color. But then I came to my senses and realized that this is Bloxburg and I should probably aesthetify everything. I think this color palette is a lot more put together. I was really proud of these stairs I ended up using, which are two of the L-shaped stairs put together. Then I decided that the build needed more shape, so I ended up using shelves to give these ridges. We are now up to the interior, and because they are townhouses, I'd like to keep them generally the same plan except for minor changes of course, but despite already investing like 2 hours to this point, I wasn't feeling too confident about the design. It didn't really fit Lavender Lane, right? Like it was too old fashioned -y in architecture. In Lavender Lane, we like to keep it newer and fresh. Though that was my initial plan with this town, so I had to convince myself that I should continue on with this design. Hence why I'm doing landscaping right now. This is usually the last part, but I need to look into the future and get a glimpse of the final product. And I must say, these cherry blossom trees really convinced me. I did color them green, but they still look top tier. Then I thought, before we start furnishing the inside, we should at least provide our townhouses with electricity. Hence why I'm adding electricity poles. Before we continue this video, our sponsor for today is Peppy Play. They recently came out with a new game called Peppy Hospital 2. In this game, you have the freedom to run this roleplay hospital. For example, helping out this lady who just arrived in an emergency helicopter. It seems that she has some sort of virus floating around. Let's use hand sanitizer to get rid of it. Kinda worked. Ooh, how about a mask? That works a lot better. We can take a blood test to see if she does have the virus. Oh, and she does. Let's lay her down, monitor her heartbeats, give her oxygen and fluids. Oh my gosh, that worked! She's all better! This teaches us that rest and fluids are important when trying to get better. This game is not only fun, but also educational. There's so much more to explore, like this vaccination room or this state-of-the-art laboratory where we can run fan experiments. You can now download this game for free using the link in the description below or pinned comment. You can also download using this QR code right here. Now let's get back into the video. At first I asked myself if I wanted to be lazy and just make the interior all the same. They are townhouse apartments of the same complex after all. But just by looking at the townhouses, they already had their personality and story written in their colors. I just had to make it come alive. So we'll be furnishing the first house first, and before that, I kind of wanted to make sure that everything fits. We have to establish where the areas are going to be. This one is going to be the main bedroom for this townhouse, and the small room over here, I also want it to be a bedroom, but no beds fit. I even tried to make it more spacious by removing walls, but it still looked awkward. That's when I had to make an important decision. A life-changing decision. Literally. Because originally, the characters that were going to live here is a teen daughter and a young mom. But I had to change it to a toddler boy and their young mom just so I can use the only bed that fits. The toddler bed. That was the third floor. Let's move on to the second floor where the entrance is. Here I encountered another problem. The kitchen. Where was I going to put it? At first I tried it here but it looked so awkward. Then for some reason, it eventually ended up working out because this little hallway here could fit a small kitchen. And honestly, I adore this design choice of mine so much. 
Now you must be wondering why this young mom can't afford such expensive appliances. That's because this young mom happens to be an influencer. Let me start from the beginning. She was originally a rich teenage girl living in a really nice luxurious family house in Oakview Crest. With this lifestyle, she filmed every second of it and posted it all over social media. That of course caused her to get a small following. After she fell pregnant, her parents were extremely disappointed and they would constantly degrade her about her life choices. So she fled and she brought her camera with her. This whole situation made her into an even bigger name. And now she owns her own townhouse, can afford nice furniture and appliances, and a nice area for her baby boy to grow up in. As you can tell, her house is picture perfect. The wallpaper, the color scheme, so fresh and so clean at the same time. Her job is to have the picture perfect life. Here, we're just dealing with the entrance of the townhouse. As soon as you come in, you are greeted by this console table and mirror. The space is already so limited, so I couldn't clutter this particular townhouse since I wanted to demonstrate that their lifestyle is really luxurious. Our kitchen is so tiny that I can't even fit a microwave and the cabinet that usually has a microwave holder kept glitching. So with these shelves, I made my own microwave holder area. I'm so proud to say that in this video, I have quite a lot of favorite spaces and this one is probably one of them. Just the overall vibe of their luxurious city life. You are living in luxury, but your space is still small. The young woman that lives here still didn't lose her great taste for china and silver as she started her own collection which is displayed right here in the dining area. I still think it's pretty important to note that she is an influencer. She's sponsored by brands to promote different types of baby toys, outfits, furniture. So what she is sent is usually not up to her. She's usually labeled as sad beige mom and her baby, a sad beige baby. Babies need color, they said. It's important for their development, they said. True, what they don't know is that this mother doesn't have too much of a choice. But she does let her baby have color in their bedroom. She tries. Next is her bedroom. I gave her a desk where she can do her makeup routines, even a camera. I did struggle with the tripod, let's not talk about it. She has a lot of makeup with all the brands that send samples to her PO box. She might not live with her parents anymore, but she definitely is still living the life of a princess. Moving on to the next townhouse. This one only has two floors. There is definitely a shift in aesthetics. A big shift. This townhouse does not have the latest appliances or electronics. It kept the original wallpaper and carpets. I moved the kitchen against the right wall because this apartment doesn't have extra floors like the others. So we must use the space wisely, meaning we have to fit the kitchen, the living room, and the dining room all on this floor alone. The man that lives here is a struggling writer. He's had writer's block for a good six months now, and it's not in a very healthy mental state as well. This has left the townhouse in an absolute state. He still studies at the community college nearby while everyone is out there partying. All he's ever cared about was finishing his book. He's a writer, hence a reader, therefore all the books. And the papers? Drafts upon drafts and manuscripts that have been rejected by his mentor. He has plates that are full of mold now and his laundry hasn't been done in months. His mother would be so ashamed. There's such a big difference between this townhouse compared to the one next door. Let's move downstairs. So this little nook here is where all his ideas come alive. This is where he writes everything. On this pretend typewriter I made and this old janky computer of his. And can we just appreciate the literal storyboard he has created here? Everywhere there's crumbled pieces of paper for every idea he's ever had that has been a failure. He was never much of a decorator either. As long as he's using something to use, he didn't really mind the quality of the furniture he's using. His room is no different. It's also a mess, but even worse because there's a rotting pizza box. His bathroom exhibits a mountain of his clothes and its own collection of moldy plates. Glad that's over now because I could barely hold my breath anymore with the odor coming from that place. Next up is the third townhouse. The people that live here you would be familiar with. They are the parents of the farm girl that recently moved to her grandfather's farm. If you don't recall, she lived in a loft. And these are her parents, the owners of the grocery store. Despite having all the money, they still chose to live in the good old Lavender Lane where their daughter grew up. It's actually quite sad because they could have gotten a mansion, but instead they wanted to stay close to their daughter and their family business. Sadly for them, their daughter is the one that didn't want to stay. They even converted their old family loft to her own loft. And for what? She now lives in Greenville Farms and still hasn't invited them over. 
With the design of the entrance hall, I wanted them to still be humble and in touch with their roots. Hence why I have this little working station where they still plant flowers. I did say I had a lot of favorite areas in this build, and again, this is one of them. This very hallway. It's just so cozy, like, I could live here forever. Let's not forget our water closet that's literally the size of a closet. Also a question. So here in Australia, a lot of older houses have separate bathrooms and toilets. Like this one we are making right now. But I remember when I first came here, it was the oddest thing. Why wouldn't the toilet be with the rest of the bathroom? Like, I get it. Maybe it was stinky and it gave people the chance to shower while others are using the toilets. But yeah, it's just odd. So let me know what the norm is for you and what country you live in. Do you have your toilets with your bathroom or are they in separate rooms? Now moving downstairs, the former parents are a lot more practical and therefore before moving, they made sure that they also have a little kitchenette in the dining area. So that way they don't have to keep walking up and down the stairs. They are nearing retirement age and therefore are just pursuing their hobbies like this jam making hobby the dad ended up being obsessed over in the summer. They also love having seatings everywhere and extra dining chairs for any family member that would want to visit. They love having company and entertaining guests. They definitely chose this townhouse because it had a clear view of their grocery store right across the road. This is their little office where they deal with the grocery store business stuff and also a nice calm reading place for the husband while the mom is yelling at him for something. And lastly, the bedroom where the husband snores heartily while the wife sleeps with her earplugs on. Now, the last house. With this one, I'm keeping it empty. That's because I want you to comment down who you would like to live here. Make up a story for them, what their townhouse might look like inside, and like the comments of the ones that you guys would like to have me future. Whoever has the most like concept down below will be the winner, and their characters will get to live here, and I will furnish the townhouse off cam and have the reveal next Lavender Lane video. I think that's that for today. Let's start the tour of the townhouses. I'll show you around. As I am currently filming this, it is 2.35 a.m. and I am so very, very tired. So I'm so sorry if I sound really, really, really tired because I am. This is the first house of that influencer girl and I wanted everything to be so chic, you know? Very influencer-like, very not beige. It's just very neutral. Yeah, and this kitchen that I love so much, honestly, I don't mind paying for a apartment like this. Not at all. Actually, I might not be able to pay for it because if this was in New York, this would be like a, I don't, I don't even know, um, like a million, uh, multiple million dollar home, you know? But this is just Lavender Lane, so it's pretty cheap. Hence why the next door neighbor that has the really, really stinky apartment can afford it. And this is the little boy's room. And it's just uh, overwhelming with colors, you know? Because I still wanted the mom to still want his son or oh, her son to get a really nice childhood you know to see colors not be a sad beige baby like what everyone on the internet's saying um yeah that's kind of what i wanted to show uh she is a good mom she is still pretty young so she's still learning um yeah so this is the bathroom and i had to put a bathtub here because i had to bathe the toddler okay wait can you bathe the toddler in the showers? No, you can't. Okay, yeah, I, I'm right, okay? I had to bathe the toddler in the bathtub. That's why I had to put the toilet in a separate room. Anyways, <laughs> next um, apartment. This townhouse is quite stinky, so make sure you hold your breath, okay? So there's literally like rotting pizza over there. I can smell the carpet, you know, of this thing. I can sm smell the, the grubby tiles, bro, <laughs> okay? But I actually kind of like the vibe of it. Um, how I kind of like thought of it was Jughead Jones. Look, what was that? Like season four? When, when did they do a time skip on R Riverdale? I don't know. But basically, Basically, he was like a struggling writer and I was like, yeah, let's play with this like, um, this really depressed state a little bit. Oh my gosh, I think there's someone outside my door. That's scary. Okay, anyways. Um, yeah, let's leave. Okay, it's kind of stinky. Yeah. Yeah, that was enough of that. <laughs> enough of that. And next, the farmer parents house. Okay, I think this might actually be my favorite out of all the four. One doesn't even count, first of all, because 
well, there's nothing there. But this would be my favorites. Yeah, definitely. Just the overall vibe of it, like flowers and, you know, being a farmer. And I don't know, it's such a cute lifestyle. I wish I was a farmer. I didn't notice that I was... I wasn't very well educated with like all the farming stuff until Doki and I we were filming the farm life um, episode and I <laughs> I just didn't know a lot of things and I just felt very stupid okay um, oh and I didn't show you this part but they do have like this little uh, gardening thingy on the railing of their railing what sorry it's nearly 3 a.m and i'm very tired and yeah i really like this um little uh study area i could live here i could smell this place see this is what a good smelling build looks like okay yes i, I said it like that because sometimes you look at a build and you're like yeah that's that hits the spot <laughs> anyways let's go downstairs i didn't mention this but this is probably my number one favorite spot in this whole build like just oh like just everything about it okay ignore the bathroom i'm not talking about the bathroom i'm talking about like the fact that there is a little kitchenette and then a little dining area okay fine you're not gonna look back okay fine whatever <laughs> okay i guess we're gonna keep moving on let's go to the last apartment that i asked you guys to comment down your concept okay and anyone can have a go at it and for you guys who you know if you're reading comments and you're like oh my gosh this concept is kind of pretty cool go like that concept or that comment and whoever has like the most liked one i will end up building their concept if you get what i'm trying to say and you know move in the people that they want to move in whatever you get what i mean but make sure that it's appropriate please nothing weird okay um and also make sure that the rooms kind of fit you know like um so we have a bathroom over here so i don't want to see you guys say oh and they have like 10 children that <laughs> Where am I going to fit 10 children, bro? <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you later. Bye.